Hello, welcome to Aussie Rush. We are going to make a dragon today. I was inspired by dragons and beasties on DeviantArt that made me want to design my very own dragon. I've made two 3D dragons before. One is Toothless back in 2014, which I do have a video on making it. And the second dragon is the Foxy War Pirate inspired dragon back in 2015. Now, this is my third time making a dragon. And this is a winter dragon based on my own design. What's important in this tutorial is the technique and the thought process that I went through when creating this beast. So I don't want you to follow this video just so that you can recreate the exact same dragon but to use this video as a guide on how you can start to design and create your very own dragon or other creatures. I will also show you how I made this winter looking environment. First I sketch out roughly on how the dragon would look like for my head but I did make changes as I start creating it with clay. And oh I have to apologize for the lighting in this video it was really bright so I had to darken it down and the quality isn't that good. I'm sorry about that What I'm doing here is I'm using aluminum foil as the armature I just crumbled the foil into the shape of the dragon that I have sketched out The armature is for support and to save clay also reduce the weight of the dragon Then start adding the clay to the armature. You can use any color you want Start wrapping the clay on the armature It's better to wrap from the bottom up because it's easier to smooth out the seams when designing a dragon and you have to think about what kind of dragon you want to make. What is the background story and are there any power the dragon possesses and so on. Think about the theme to your creature. Mine is a winter theme and the dragon is a gatekeeper or a gate guardian. That's why she will have a key. Some other themes can be those four elements of fire, water, wind, and earth. Or you can make a hybrid of different animals that you like. Dragons are very flexible to design and the possibilities are endless. Once you are done with smoothing out the seams, start adding more clay to shape the head and the neck. This is only the upper body part. You want to smooth out the surface as much as possible. But if you can't, you can always make up a design that can cover up the imperfections. As you add clay, think about the proportion and the body structure of this creature. Do you want it to have a muscular body built or a slender one? Also compare the size of the head to the body. If you are making a cute baby dragon, the head is usually bigger than the body. I'm aiming for a teenager type of a dragon, if that makes sense. So I want a slender and graceful body and facial features. Once the upper body part looks good, take another ball of clay and roll it into a cone shape. This is the tail for the dragon. To connect the upper body part and the tail, I use a ball tool to indent the water end of the tail first, then connect and smooth out the seams to make the body look as a one whole piece instead of two pieces. Ball tools are available on my Etsy shop if you are looking for that. By the way, just throw that in. Another important design aspect to think about is the colors of the dragon or other creatures. The colors usually depend on the theme. For example, I'm focusing on a winter theme and I immediately thought about white because of snow, light blue because of the coldness of winter, pretty much the characteristics of the theme that you want to create. Then I start to work on the head. I'm starting with the eyes first and I use this diamond shape cat eye stone. I have other colors available on my Etsy shop if you want to use this type of stones for your creations also. Once I made the indentation for the eyes, place the stone and push it into the clay. Then add the eyelids to cover up the rough edges. For the rest of the head, it's really up to you. You can design it in any way you want. You can have cat-like ears, add some horns, spikes, scales, and so on. Have fun in designing your one-of-a-kind creature. As you design, think about where it comes from, what type of creature it is. Come up with a whole story for it and give it a name. Make it personal. So I'm not going into every single little steps or details on the designing part for my dragon. But keep in mind that as I was making this, I really just wanted to incorporate as much detail as possible so that I could cover up the imperfections. And you might not see it on the camera, but there are a lot of imperfections and dust on my dragon. As a result, I added a lot of spikes to resemble eyes. I like to add some gemstones and jewelry to this dragon to give it more color and personality. So just decorate it in any way I want or any way you want it for your dragons. Here I'm using glow-in-the-dark clay for the horns. There are many different shapes and textures out there, but I went with twisting two pieces of coils together and give it a bit of curve. 
As you can see here, I have added some gemstones near the eyes, some spikes around the ears and the neck also on top of the head. For the spikes on the back, I use glow-in-the-dark clay. This is inspired by Toothless and the glow-in-the-dark feature helped to make this dragon a bit more magical. If you are stuck on designing your dragon and don't know where to start, you can find inspirations from animations, movies, your pets, books, other artists' creations, nature, and even your dreams. My inspiration came from looking at other artists' creations. Then I borrowed a bunch of books and dragons just to understand more about this mythical creature. I have one big and one small ball of clay. The big one I'm shaping it into a soft edge triangle and this is the big thigh for the dragon. And the small one is the foot. Dragons have many kinds of feet and the shape depends on what you are going for for your dragon. Again, you can think about the position that you want your dragon to be in. I chose a city position since it's easier to make for this video's purpose. I like to blend the thigh to the body instead of just putting it side by side. Blending the clay together will help to secure the pieces stronger. The belly of the dragon is quite dirty. I know that you can't really see it on the camera. And I didn't feel like cleaning it with rubbing alcohol, so I chose to add some light blue colored clay in pieces for defining the belly or the tummy. Every move you make is part of the designing and it really helps if there is a story to go along with the dragon. The story helps to define or answer design questions such as why is the tummy in blue instead of orange or why are there spikes and so on. Sometimes I can over decorate this dragon so I had to step back and look at it from afar to decide what needs to be added or taken away. For some reason, I feel the head is too empty and cold, so I figure I should add some hair or mane to this dragon. This reminds me of Jack Sparrow's hairdo. If the clay doesn't stick to each other, add some TLS will bake and bound for stronger attachments. And this is how the winter dragon looks like so far. Now I'm working on the tail and one of the books I've read showed several different ideas for the tail shape and made me think what shape I should give to this dragon. The tail is actually quite important so don't skip this part. Since it's a winter dragon, I chose to twist white and light blue color clay together in the form of icicle and make several of this to be attached to the tail so it will look like ice popping out. I apply some TLS to the tail for better attachment. You can make the tail really simple or make it super detailed. Alright, so here are the two arms for the dragon. One arm I want it to touch the ground and the other one to touch the key. The arms are quite simple to make. I just roll the clay into a teardrop shape and then divide the fingers or the claws or paws. I don't know why you call it. But yeah, the arms look like cat's paws. It's cuter this way and easier to make. So one arm is straight and the other one has a bit of curve to it. Since this dragon is a gate guardian, it's appropriate for her to have a key. I got this key from banker.com. I have the link down below. I initially thought about her holding the key in both arms, but that didn't work out. So one arm touching the key is a simple solution. I attach one of the arms in this position so that the key will go under the paw or the dragon's hand. To cover up the imperfections, I'm going to add a bunch of these little rice-like pieces to the arms, the back back and thighs, it's good to have different sizes and you can put it pretty much anywhere you want but I want to cover up the imperfections and the seams. Moving on to the most exciting and challenging part is making the wings. There are many different types of wings out there and I want to go for an angel-like wings because when I hear the word guardian, I think about angels. There is no right or wrong design so don't be scared to design what you want for your creature. I know the wings are going to be quite heavy so I have to use wire to maintain the overall shape. I'm using 22 gauge wire here and bending it into the shape I want. It's a bit tricky to get two wings exactly the same, so I eyeballed the shape and the size. You can check by holding them side by side and look at them sideways, up and down to see if they are close in shape and size to each other. Then I insert it onto the back of the dragon just to have an uh, indentation for the wire. After that, take the wire out and start covering it with clay. Cut off the shape you need and wrap the clay around the wire. This doesn't have to be perfect because I will add more clay to it later on. 
Make sure to leave some wire uncovered on the part where it connects to the back of the dragon. Once the first stage of the wings are done, insert it back to the dragon and you may feel the wings are wobbly, which mine did so I added more clay on the connection points to help straighten the wings from moving down on the back. Once the wings feel strong on the back, now is the time to clean up any dust particles and fingerprints that are still visible. I use this rubbing alcohol and a small brush where you can use a q-tip to clean up any dust particles. Before putting the dragon inside the oven to bake, I want to make sure the wings won't break during baking because I use a convection oven which has a fan inside that could put more pressure on the wings. So here I'm using 22 gauge wire for support. Basically I'm bending the wire into a rectangle shape and pull the two ends apart so that it can stand. Here is a picture showing where I will put the wire stand for support when I bake this dragon. Now it's the time to bake this in the oven for 5 minutes only to let the wings harden so that I can add more clay to it. The purpose of pre-baking is to help prevent from messing up the form of the wings. This is pre-baked and as you can see on the right wing, I have already put more clay on it. That's pretty much how I want the wing to look like and I'm going to show you how I did it. You can look up reference pictures of wings to gain inspirations. I want the wings to have the same texture as the hair with the main, so I roll out a bunch of coils and apply some TLS on the wing first before placing the coils on. Unbaked clay doesn't attach well to the baked clay, that's why you need some TLS for bake and bounce for making sure the fresh clay stays on. I first cover the entire wing with the long coils, then shorter coils for the second layer. Having different layers help to create volume and depth. Now I need to cover up those rough edges on the wings, so I made teardrop shapes and flatten them into thin pieces, then start placing them under the wings and the rough edges. Make sure to have different sizes. I pretty much just overlap each piece like this. Once I get to the edges, I wrap the clay from under up, then add the rest of the details on the areas I want. I added a lot on the back to help support the wings and to cover up seams. The last bit of detail is to add some Pearl X powder on the wings. I used several different colors to see which ones came out better. A slight hint of gold is nice to the wings. I also added some blue for more of cold feel. Once I'm done powdering, it's time to bake this dragon again, but this time I baked it for 20 minutes. I use Palmer clay, which is oven baked clay, but if you use air dry clay, then you don't need to bake it. This is all baked and cooled down. I'm applying some gloss to the wings to seal up the Pearl X powder because it can come off if you don't glaze it. I have this specific gloss available on my Etsy if you need it. We are not completely done yet. Well, this part is optional, so you can choose to make it or not. I want to make a scene or a base for this winter dragon to sit on. So let's begin on making the crystals, which are meant to be ice. First shape will form the white color pipe cleaners into the shape that you want for the crystals. I'm making big and small ones just to have some variations and attach strings to them. The main ingredients for forming those shiny crystals is borax and you also need hot water. I got borax at Target at the cleaning section. So what you need to do is first fill the big jar with hot boiling water. Yes, it has to be boiling water. Why else it won't work? Then add borax to the water and stir. I'm just using a plastic spoon for this. You have to add enough borax in order to grow crystals. So just keep adding it until the water becomes cloudy and that it cannot hold any more borax. Then I pour some into small jars and I add blue food coloring to both jars and stir. Then tie the string with a pipe cleaner onto a brush or you can use sticks and let the pipe cleaner hang in the jar overnight. So I do recommend you doing this before you go to sleep. It takes about 8 hours to see a decent amount of crystals growing on the pipe cleaners. Now I'm taking the crystals out and to dry them, I just let them sit on the paper towel for a couple of hours. Meanwhile, I'm going to paint this wooden base with white acrylic paint. Yeah, I did put too much paint on it. Ugh. Let the paint dry first before moving on. Once everything has dried, I use hot glue gun to glue the crystals onto the wooden base. 
I already took out the strings on the crystals. After that, I use cotton balls to cover the rest of the wooden base, and it helps to cover up the hot glue gun on the crystals. The cotton ball is meant to look like snow, but it does look like cloud. I use regular Elmer's glue to glue the cottons on. Here I'm adding a blue gemstone on the key since it has a spot for it. I'm using super glue to glue the stone onto the key, then place the dragon onto the base and position the key so that the dragon looks like she's touching it. Now we are done with this dragon. This is my first time going to such an extent for a Palmer clay project, although I did have multiple all-nighters for architecture in college. Man, that was such a struggle back then. This whole thing took me about 3 days to complete. I'm very happy on how it turned out and learned quite a lot on making this. I hope you find this helpful and tag Aussie Rush if you happen to make a dragon or a creature of your own. I currently have Palmer Clay's daughter's kit available among other materials I use in this video on my Etsy shop. Link is down below if you are interested. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed this video. If you do, give me a thumbs up so I know. Alright, I will see you in the next video. Bye!